Hey guys, so let's just ignore the fact that my bookshelf is really dirty here. There's like hand cream and like empty CD cases and just things. Um, normally it would look like that though. Like I have my clock up there. That's where I, my bed is right here. So the clock stays there and stuff like that. Um, but I really wanted to film a video today. Um, I just decided to film this just impromptu. Um, and yeah, so the video today is going to be on a review of the Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Um, so I actually got this book like a good couple months ago. Um, I bought like three or four other books with it. I bought um, Eeny Meeny, um, a Tammy Hogue novel, and I think something else with it as well. And I pretty much read all the other books first. I want to kind of want to save this one because like I know I can read it really fast. I read it in about two days, maybe a day and a half. If we count out some hours, uh, probably about two days. And that's like slow for me for young adult novels. Um, but I have work to do now. I, I can't just lie around like I used to before when I was in school and read a book in four hours. Um, I do have a job <laughs> that requires eight hours of attention. So, um, yeah, so I read those books before this one just because I just felt that. I know I was kind of saving this book almost because I was like, okay, like I, there's a lot of hype around the book. And there's just a lot of, like, conversation around it, I guess. Good thing about the conversation is that a lot of people compared to other, like, what young adult um, fantasy novels. And I don't read those books necessarily. I, like, the only really, like, fantasy book series I've read would be, like, Harry Potter and the Darkest Mind series. And, like, they're not really the same as the Red Queen. So, um, I wasn't, like, disappointed in that way. Um, so I didn't have, like, this um hype for that but it was still hyped up in a sense overall i give red queen about three and a half out of five stars on goodreads i gave it a three to five because to me a four out of five on goodreads has to be like a pretty much pretty amazing freaking book and five out of five is just like unbelievable in my in my tier of stuff um so i try to i guess start out with like five out of five stars and then kind of like take away points based on that um, overall, the plot is really good. So, what happens is, there's like, I don't, I'm not even sure what year it is, because they had technology in the book, but they were in like castles, and they sounded like they were in like medieval times, so I'm not really sure what year it is, to be honest. Um, but the basis of the whole novel, and it's going to be a series which I'm excited about, um, is the fact that there are two different like bloodlines there's the red bloodlines and the silver bloodlines red bloods are kind of like your um poor people i guess they you know go to the war they um are just like very in poverty they are just your low the low um inferior race i guess and then you have the silver bloods which they're born with abilities like um they refer to telekinesis as telkies um people can like power with water and they can you know have fire and stuff and they are the ones that have abilities and reds don't um and so they're like the high there's like these people called the high houses so kind of like in the sense that i thought about it like how they had houses so like house samos or house whatever kind of like in a sense like game of thrones houses like they had like houses for families and stuff like that um so the main character mare is a red blood and she her three other brothers have been sent to war and stuff um, and her younger sister is really good at, like, um, making silk and fashion, I guess, for the Silver Bloods. That's where she works. She works kind of like the courtyard of the palace, I guess, is what I would say. Um, and her parents are kind of just, like, in poverty as well. They're not, um, they're passing, just passing by. Um, so Mare is a pickpocket. And she steals stuff and whatever. And um, she has a best friend who, his name's Killorn. And he gets picked for conscription. So if you don't have a job, you're not like, you're not going to be entrepreneured anywhere or anything like that, you go to war. Um, and so Mayor is 17 and she's going to be getting to war soon. Um, and the plot around this is that she meets this mysterious man. And one night and after she got in some really bad trouble with her sister, she meets this mysterious man and she's telling him, you know, what kind of trouble she's in. She's being headed to war and she wants to escape the war with her friend and she has nowhere to go. Um, so this mysterious man gets her job in the palace. And um, at 
Caesar's Palace, they have this thing called the arena, almost in a sense that uh, not, uh, that people can display their abilities um, because the king and queen have two sons that need to get married. And um, so they're displaying their abilities for them to see wit, wit, to see which girl from which house is more suitable based on her abilities. Um, and it just so happens that some sort of accident causes Mare to fall and she finds out that she has like this ability for, of lightning. Um, and she can like power lightning with her fingers and electricity and stuff like that. Um, so that is shocking because she is not supposed to have this power because she's a red blood and you know, um, there's silver blood and stuff like that. So they concoct this lie, they can claim that she was um, born to a silver blood, she was a silver blood and they died in the war and a red blood family raised her. And so she is um, betrothed to the younger son. And it kind of starts this whole whirlwind of, you know, trying to play the game necessarily of the palace and stuff. And then there's also this like, what the king refers to as a terrorist group called the Scarlet Guard that is trying to um, upend the kind of like hierarchy that they have. Like the Scarlet Guard obviously wants the reds to rise and the silvers to fall um, and stuff like that. So it's kind of intense in that way. Um, I don't want to give too much away because it is, I think it is a really good book. I think that if you haven't read a lot of fantasy and you are not going to compare it to a lot of like the novels that are in the YA fantasy realm, then it would be a really good read. Um, points that I didn't like about it, it obviously involves a love triangle. I don't like love triangles anymore. It just kind of pisses me off now that that is kind of like the realm that you have to go to to get maybe a young reader's attention. Like, I don't want a love triangle in my life. Well, maybe I do because I don't have a boyfriend at all. I've never had a boyfriend. But in general, I just think that it's it's not a plot point that derives the novel anywhere. Um, I like to read about strong women. Um, and so a little bit disappointed in that way. Um, because like the Darkest Mind series is one of my favorites, A, because it has great characters, and B, because it has no love triangle. There's no, there's love in it, but there's no love triangle in that, so. I would like that, it actually looks towards the second book, that it's going to be like a love square, but, you know, whatever. Um, the second part is, I don't, didn't really like the character of Cal, so Cal is, um, the older prince, and him and Mir have some sort of bond, and she, it's not the one she's betrothed to. But, um, he, I don't know, him and her, like, it seemed like a big plot point that they were supposed to be, like, you know, in love or whatever, or, like, that he liked her and she liked him, and no, I did not get that at all. I find, I find Cal to be not a great character in any sense of the word. Um, he just, he's too bland, I guess. Um, even the surprising twist in the villain, um, they're more interesting characters than Cal is. Cal is supposed to be this hero, I guess, in the sense, but he just kind of falls short of that, and I don't really like him. Um, and I guess Mare, in a sense, she also kind of took people for granted, and I guess she realized that in the end of the novel, that's kind of like the big thing, but it's still kind of like, she's still kind of bothering me in the sense that at the end of the novel, when she was in like a rough spot, she was like, well, no one's going to rescue me now, like, all the people are gone that would rescue me. And it's kind of like, rescue your own damn self, okay? Like, seriously. You uh, can try to try to encourage to rescue yourself, I guess. Um, overall, though, I find it to be a good book, and I'm excited to read the next one. I got it at chapters, and it was 40% off. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to read the next book and to start another series. Um, I'll probably actually, based on this, maybe read other YA fantasy series, because... Um, this one is really good, so, um, it just worries me that all of them involve love triangles, so, that is my pet peeve, <laughs> per se. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this book, this book, hope you enjoyed this vlog, and, um, I'll see you guys later. Okay, bye! <laughs>